Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're going to be solving a Physics 7C practice problem on the topic of magnetic fields and forces. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be solving today. Uh, it has basically two parts, so let's just read the first part and then we'll move towards the second one. So we have two current carrying wires that are one meter apart and then the current in the bottom wire flows to the right and we have a magnitude of 4 amps and we have to determine the direction and magnitude of the second wire, the one that's you know, on the top such that the positive charge moves with a constant velocity to the right one meter below the bottom wire as shown, explain your answer Okay, so as you can see, I have my part A over here. We'll move to part B in a second, but let's just solve this first. So we have a positive charge, and the positive charge is moving to the right. We also have this wire. Uh, this wire has a current of 4 amps moving to the right as well. And this velocity is constant, which is pretty important. And we basically have to figure out the magnitude of this current over here. So like one amp, two amps, whatever magnitude it is, and also the direction. So is it uh, left or right, basically. So the reason why this uh, constant velocity is important is because this is, you know, the, the trick to this problem. Because if you remember from 7b, a constant velocity And no change in mass basically means that delta P is equal to zero. Again, constant velocity, because P is equal to mv, right? So if the mass stays the same, which is, it stays the same, this is just like a charge. And then the velocity stays the same, so delta P is equal to zero, which also means that the net force is equal to zero, because from 7b, you might remember the equation delta P is equal to F net delta T, and this is never zero. So this is gonna be zero, this is zero. So we know that, you know, whatever amount of current we have over here, and regardless of the direction, this charge over here is not experiencing a net force. Now, just remembering what a net force is, a net force, if you remember 7b, is the sum of all forces, which in this case, we only have two forces. They are both magnetic, and it's the force due to wire one, to the magnetic field produced by wire one, plus the force produced by wire 2, uh, due to the magnetic field wire 2, and this has to be equal to zero. Now what does this mean? Well, we only have two forces and they have to be equal to zero. This means that um, these two must be equal in magnitude opposite direction. Equal in magnitude, opposite direction. So basically what we have to do is figure out what the magnitude and the direction is due to um, the wire that we do have. And then we basically use that information to, to have the um, equal magnitude, but then we just figure out what the opposite, the opposite direction is. So let's just concentrate on wire number one for a second. So for wire number one, so for wire number one, add the charge the magnetic field that this wire is producing over here. If you use your right hand rule, you're going to get that it is producing a fear that is going into the page. So B, due to wire one, goes into the page. So it'll be a cross. And then the velocity of the charge is going to the right. 
and our charge is positive like this so this means that if we use our right hand rule if we use our right hand rule then this direction over here just by using a right hand rule over here then we would have up and then this is positive so b1 is going up so the magnitude so the direction is b1 is going up and the magnitude is just equal to this equation that we have over here So I'm just gonna substitute i is equal to four, and then this is two pi, and then r is just one meter because we're going with this one. So two mu divided by pi, basically. So now we're gonna take this number and this has to be equal to the second magnitude, right? At least in magnitude. So this has to be equal to this, uh, to the magnitude produced by the upper wire as well. So B2, if we just copy the equation, well, maybe I should clarify that this is I1, R1. So this is mu naught I2, two pi R2. So this is equal to mu naught i2, and then we do know this distance. This distance is equal to two, so four pi. But then this is also equal to this in magnitude. So um, like this. So this is just because it has to be equal to B1, and then this is just substituting directly the equation over here. So then this mu cancels out, the pi cancels out, and we get that the magnitude, you have a four over here, it goes multiplying, so the magnitude should actually be four, eight amps. And now, so this is my final answer. So this should be eight amps, but now we have to figure out the direction. And the direction should be whatever gives me a B2 going down. So basically, um, we need a, oh, this should be F. Yeah, so this should be F because this is B. And then if you multiply, then you get F. So we need a force that is going down. If you want your force, if you want your force to be going down and these two didn't change, then you need this to be going up. So that when you use your right hand rule, if you use your right hand rule this way, then you end up getting an F2 going down. And then in order to have a magnetic field that is going out of the page over here, then you need to sort of like backwards use your right hand rule. And in order to get this, then you need your wire to be moving to the left. So opposite direction, basically, like this. Now, I think that it would be sort of easy to figure out that because they have to be equal and opposite if this is right, this is left, but this is sort of like how you figure it out step by step in case that there's anything harder than this. You would just basically sort of like backwards, you do your right hand rule. So this is the final answer for part A. And now let's just go ahead and read what part B is. 
So part B says, shown below are three wires, each carrying current of equal magnitude, forming an equilateral triangle. The direction of the current in each wire is depicted below. A negative charge is positioned equidistant between wires one and two and moved up as shown. Determine, the charge experience, the, determine if the charge experiences a force and if yes, in which direction? Explain your answer. Okay, so as you can see, I have this, this drawing over here and we basically have to figure out whether the charge experiences a force and if yes, in which direction. Now again, by force, they meant uh, net force. So they are asking us if there is a net force. And your net force, again, by definition, is the addition of all of your forces. B3 over here. So now basically what I'm going to do is sort of try to convince you that these two cancel out. And how am I going to convince you? Well, B1. So B1 would be the magnetic field over here due to wire 1. And if you use your right hand rule, you'll see that it's going uh, upwards. B2, if you use your right hand rule, the four, the magnetic for the magnetic field, I'm sorry, the magnetic field over here due to this wire is going downwards. Again, the right hand rule. Now, in both cases, in both of these cases, we have the same distance r. So these two cancel out because if you look at the equation, uh, the magnitude is exactly the same, the distance is exactly the same, but they are in opposite directions. So these two are just gonna cancel each other out. So basically the direction of our net force is just gonna be whatever so these two cancel out, and then this one's the one that matters, right? So my net force is just gonna be whatever force we have due to wire three. Now for wire three, uh, the direction of the magnetic field due to this wire over here, at this point would be, so okay, so this is going down. So if you do this, then you're gonna get left like this so you're gonna get left and then your velocity is going up but then your charge is less than zero so your charge is negative so if you use your right hand rule over here then you're gonna get if we use our right hand rule we're gonna get out of page But if we use, you know, if we remember that this charge is negative and that the force is, you know, whatever this direction is, but then you have to multiply the charge. If you use your right hand rule, just uh, using this two, you're going to get out, but then you need to consider that this charge is negative. So once you consider all of these factors together, then our final answer should be into the page into the page, final answer. So our final answer is that they have the same direction and then this direction, if we use our right hand rule, is into the page, final answer. Into the page. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please let me know by leaving a like and I'll see you guys on the next video.